Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. It's starting off as a beautiful morning and as you can see, the creek is still up quite a bit. Um, it's, it's, we've had a lot of rain the last week or so, so it's, it's doing good. Sun shining, uh, nice temperature. It is supposed to warm up pretty good today. So there, there's your weather report. Um, as you know, and I've said it many times over the last week or two, Things seem to be advancing pretty quickly. I mean, they're, they're, we're, 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 it's, it's, it's going to get worse before it gets worse kind of thing. And it, that, that's not trying to spread fear. That's not doom and gloom. That's just it's just reality, right? That's, that's the time that we're in. We're, we're in this time right now with just crazy stuff going on. I mean, it's, it's orchestrated. It's for a purpose to destroy us, to bring about some new globalist regime, world order, and all that kind of stuff. But nevertheless, it is crazy and it's happening. Um, and I could go on and on about some things, and I may mention them throughout the video, a few things that's, that's happening. But the main thing is, as I said the other day, that we need to, we need to kind of start getting back to the basics. And, and what I mean by that is that as, as prepared-minded people, you know, this has been going on for a few years now, right? You, you've been watching my channel, you've been watching others, you've been actively preparing, you've been learning and all this kind of stuff. And maybe you feel like you've gotten further down the road in your advanced levels of preparedness. And that's great, but we cannot forget the beginnings. We can't forget uh, what we need to do with the basics. Uh, food supplies, food production, water, supply what well, having access to a water source you know um power uh, what's your plans for generating power uh solar do you have that or are you just going to go primitive and not have it uh, what whatever your plans are you need to kind of revisit those and kind of tweak them out a little bit kind of make sure that you know maybe you've learned stuff and you go back and you're like oh well this is what i was going to do but now i know a better way to do it um whatever it is uh, I would be revisiting that stuff real soon and and kind of going over figuring out oh wow we've you know we've been eating some of our preps which you really should you should rotate them by eating them and and we haven't replenished as many as we want I mean that actually happened to us recently uh, in our canned foods and I got to look at I'm like wow we <laughs> we've been eating them but we haven't replenished this one thing we've been replenishing other things but we've we've kind of you know forgotten about that one so we need to stock up on that one. Uh, so I would highly recommend that right now you be doing that. Things are things are moving pretty quickly, actually. And when you look at, especially on a global level, um, since China started, you know, was it last week? They they did the little mock invasion of of Taiwan and and kind of had everyone on edge for a little bit. Taiwan, you know, they act, they activated their military. There was some threats back and forth. A, a, a United States um, a carrier fleet uh, started to mobilize and everything. And, and China has kind of backed off a little bit, but they're still on a daily basis pretty much sending uh, planes and warships around Taiwan. But where they haven't backed off, in fact, they've increased, is their language. Um, they have, have made it very, very clear that, that they intend to stop any type of independence with Taiwan. And, and let me make this clear. The reason why this seems to be happening right now is that Taiwan just had an election. And their election, they, they elected people to basically declare independence and, and be an independent nation. And so China has said, that's not going to happen. We will use any type of force to stop it. And any nation, including the United States, that tries to get in our way, we will stop them and use violent force against them. They, they issued warnings and threats to the United States to, to not step foot in Taiwan, to not do business with Taiwan, to not talk to Taiwan. Uh, and, and then just yesterday, uh, one of their top generals uh, was giving a speech, and, and he basically blamed most of the world's problems right now uh, blamed it on the United States. Uh, stuff going on in the Middle East, and Russia, Iran, Israel, uh, Gaza, uh, China, Taiwan, all of these problems, that it's the United States and that they, that they stand in the way of progress and all this kind of stuff. 
So there's there's definitely some some increased language there. When you move over to, to Russia and Ukraine, that's kind of happened in the same way on a, a, a one of the most major Russian uh, news channels or talk show channels or whatever. They were talking about the likelihood that Poland would be the, the nuclear battleground state, that Poland would be wiped off the planet, and that they even said that the Polish language would never be spoken again. Uh, so they're, they're making very, very overt threats. Um, and it's because just recently, most of the NATO countries, including the United States, has told Ukraine that, yeah, we give you permission to use these weapons inside of Russia. In fact, um, I, I believe it was uh, Norway, uh, Netherlands, one, one of the, they, um, the, the one that gave them the F-16s, I can't remember which one it was, gave Ukraine F-16s and they gave them permission to take those F-16s and use them inside of Russia, to fly the F-16s into Russia and do direct strikes. Uh, so, so there's a lot of stuff happening there. And then of course, the, the whole Trump ordeal, the, the election, uh, it, we could go on and on. And the point is, is that things are advancing. Uh, just yesterday, I believe it was, that Anthony Blinken, Secretary of State, said that Joe Biden doesn't want to start World War III. Well, I thought that was kind of interesting, what he said and how he said it. Well, well, Joe Biden doesn't want to start World War III. I mean, maybe he's going to have to, but he doesn't desire that, right? That seemed a little strange and almost like a, a, a strange warning. And so as we progress uh, over the next few weeks and few months, and, and I think at this point, based on what's transpired over the last week, I, I can't imagine any of you watching right now, and maybe there are some, but I can't imagine any of you that are watching right now would say that this upcoming election is going to go through without a hitch. You know, that it's, it's going to be just a totally normal election cycle and everything will be nice and peaceful and kumbaya and we'll all go and vote and, and you know, they'll, they'll crown the new king and, and it'll be okay. So I'm, I'm sure that most of you, if not every one of you, would not say that. So the point is, is that things are advancing. I say this all the time, but I, but I'm, I really want to hit home in this particular video. Things are advancing. They're getting worse before they get worse, uh, which means it's, it's, it's kind of in a downward spiral right now. You need to be taking this serious. <clears throat> I'm going to throw out a random guess. I would guess that we have two to three months of somewhat normalcy. I mean, it'll be progressing through those two to three months, through the summer, basically. Summer's about ready to get kicked off. And so I would say the summer, we're going to see more and more protests. Uh, we're going to see increasing violence. Uh, we're going to see more food problems. Possibly the, the H5N1 might, you know, continue to grow it and be a problem. But by the time election happens, um, all of these things are going to be happening. But I would guess that through the summer, it's still going to be somewhat okay. So you don't have a lot of time to get ready is what I'm saying. Now, by the time of the election and the next January, things might just be totally normal. But I doubt that that's gonna be the case. So please uh, be revisiting your preps. If you don't have any at all, it's a good time to start. But for most of you, I, I want you to start doing like an inventory, figure out what you have, what you could add to it. Uh, look at your food production, obviously gardening right now. Uh, can you add animals, meat animals? Be very, use wisdom when adding uh, any type of meat animal, you know, farm animal to your, to your property. The, the problem is, is that nowadays, so many people that have homesteads and they add chickens and ducks and goats and sheep, and so, they, they get particular breeds that are, that are cute. They get, they get, they're, they're, they're kind of like a pet. You don't want that. Uh, look and do some research into your area because different areas are different and find out the, the breeds of chickens or goats or sheep or rabbits, whatever it is, that um, are the very best, the hardiest, the most self-sufficient in your area. And, and stick with those. It doesn't matter how pretty they are. Um, 
Water, water is life. You've got to have solid water source. Maybe you need to be putting into a water rain catchment system. Uh, researching areas around you that you can get live surface water. Um, <clears throat> are there any springs? Do you need to build a, a, um, a well? Maybe you, you need to get an above ground pool and that above ground pool can also uh, be a backup water source. Uh, whatever it is, you need to make sure that's down. Uh, medical and medicine. Uh, medical is typically emergency medical stuff. Medicine is long-term illness. Uh, that's at least how I make the distinction for this. Uh, you need to be doing both very, very seriously because I think that's the one area that most people are gonna get blindsided. They're, they're so used to a more modern medical system that they don't think about it. They don't think about it when they get this big cut on them that, that, that at one point in time in history, if someone got that cut on them, they had a good chance of dying. Now, you know, you put some medicine on it. If you get real bad, you go to the doctor and they take, give you some pills and you're fine. What happens when all that stops? Um, the fact that you're gonna most likely become more injured because you're doing more active things. Think about that kind of stuff. Defense, there's definitely gonna be pockets and places where people are gonna have to try to take what you have. People are just gonna get even more unhinged and chaotic than what they are right now. You need to have a solid defense plan. And if you're the only person defending your family, it better be really good because that's a, that's a really bad odd. Uh, you train with your wife. If you have older children, you know, older teenagers and stuff, get them involved. Uh, build relationships with the people around you, your neighbors, your friends, the people you go to church with, your coworkers, your, your community in general. Um, start reaching out to, to them, people that you know that are kind of like-minded. Say, hey, you know, let's meet over here at so-and-so's cafe for, you know, coffee one morning and kind of start the conversation whatever it is, start building those relationships. Because I'm telling you folks that the, the time is, is getting short and, and the, the, the probability of things getting real crazy over the next six, seven, eight months, I think are, are increasing a lot. And, and we, need to, we need to be taking it very seriously and taking all the advantage of all the time that we have left or what little time that we have left to get ourselves ready. Folks, it's time to get your houses in order and prepare yourselves mentally, physically, and spiritually. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.